live. Hello, First Mint Nation. Uh, this is Matthew, uh, AKA Nifty Time on Twitter. Stoked to join you all in a, a new panel that we have lined up for everyone. Uh, I'm joined with Jack and Christina from Epics. We have a really exciting brief. We're gonna be talking at a high level about what makes a great NFT project. Uh, really, really broad brief. I have no idea really where the conversation is going to go here, but excited to dive in. Um, so to get started, probably introductions will be super helpful. Um, myself, I work at Nifty Gateway as producer. Also founded the Metaverse Meetup known as the WIP Meetup. Uh, Co-founded Metacast uh, advertising network that focuses on uh, NFT creators, uh, content producers, and matches them up with people that would like to advertise across these channels. Uh, formerly the co-founder of Scent, we're probably best known for creating valuables, which let people tokenize tweets and sell them. Jack Dorsey used it to sell his Genesis tweet for $2.9 million. But like I said, I'm joined with some excellent panelists, Jack and Christina from Epics. Uh, and I'll pass the mic first to Christina to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you're doing right now and maybe what brought you into the NFT space to begin with. Right. Hi, guys. I'm Christina. I'm co-founder and uh, CBDO of Epics. Super excited to be here. Thanks, Matthew, for being our host. And I have pleasure to share panel with Jack. Hi, Jack. Um, so starting about what brought me to the NFT world, I've been into business development and sales for more than last 10 years in uh, different corners of IT industry. But uh, last uh, three and a half, I think around four years, I'm in blockchain industry. I started as a senior uh, business development manager in Cointelegraph, which is uh, one of the biggest media. And that's actually how I met uh, founder of uh, Epics, Fred. Hey, Fred, hope you're watching us. <laughs> and um, that's uh, where basically my two passions clicked because I was always into arts, uh, collectibles, a uh, super exciting topic uh, and uh, has an uh, important part of my life. And together with the technology that I was already familiar with, as I was working in the industry, it really felt right. I'm super passionate about what we're building. And um, Epics in general, what are we doing? We're building solutions, tools, and um, multiverses for what we consider the future of the professional NFT industry. So we have a few uh, projects that we're working on right now, building them on Flow blockchain. One of them is Enemy Metal, and I will let Jack introduce as he's the creator. Great. Hi, everybody. Yeah, so I'm Jack. Um, my background is in animation uh, and motion graphics. Uh, and later on, I started moving into game development. And um, so when I first heard about blockchain and NFTs, uh, you know, about three years ago, I got really excited because it just made sense to me. We all know the, the success of game economies. And it just made sense to me how blockchain could be leveraged, uh, and especially with NFTs and universal assets. Uh, just being something that, that was just a perfect fit for the gaming industry. Um, so about three years ago, we started taking it a bit more seriously. And uh, I've been working more or less full time for about three years now on the Enemy Metal project, um, preparing and, and we actually have a launch happening in about 18 hours from now. So um, really exciting times. And as I say, three years leading up to this. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm the creator of, of Enemy Metal and um, I've also been working closely with Epix, um, you know, just on their general gamification and just, um, you know, finding good utility for NFTs. Awesome. And I think we're going to be coming back to that utility aspect of NFTs over and over, over the course of our conversation. Um, but like the brief says, we're here to talk about what makes a great NFT project. Um, there's so many different types of NFT projects out there from art to collectibles and the whole spectrum in the middle there. But I want to toss this back to you to get started, Jack. Um, when you're looking
What are you looking for? What do you think is really acceptable to do? A second. Uh, yeah, sorry, I missed that question. Sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Um, Jack, I just wanted to ask you, when you're looking at an NFT project, what are the attributes that you are kind of like looking for to begin with? What's that checklist that you run through to determine well, if it's worth your time or not? Sure. Um, I think, you know, we, we really, I'm always looking for something different, um, something unique and special. I think um, you know, we've, we've passed the stage of the obvious where, you know, sure, you can have a, a graphic or a video and, and make it an NFT, but now we're looking at, well, more smart NFTs, you know, uh, NFTs that can be upgraded, NFTs that can change form, you know, from one to another. Um, uh, yeah, so th I think that's, that's my primary thing is I think we, we at the, the very beginning, at the genesis of the NFT stage, I think we're going to see some incredible stuff over the next few years. Um, it's definitely a, a long-term thing. I think um, the best ideas haven't even been thought up yet. So I'm, I'm really excited and it's an amazing industry to be in. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's my primary thing. I'm, I'm most interested, of course, in, in collectibles. So, you know, I've been following on all the blockchains. And as I say, we have been working with uh, NFTs for more than three years now, including 3D NFTs. So, you know, that's the kind of thing that I would like to see more of. Um, people integrating, you know, uh, little GLB uh, 3D objects into actual NFTs so that, you know, to, to make something different. And then, as I say, make them make them intelligent, give them a chance, give them a, a way to change form on a certain date or, you know, or allow you to trade them in to burn them to to build new NFTs, you know, and just we, we have like there's so much potential and so many options uh, that are possible. Um, so always, I think it's it's time now for, you know, for people to really start looking at deep at this, not just uh, lock in an image and really just see where we can take this, what, what we can turn it into. Yeah, that, are there any specific projects um, that you've seen make any steps in that direction, um, whether it be adding a GLB file into it so that, for example, like crypto cubes you collect this 3D geometric cube that then gives you the ability to insert it into Decentraland as a 3D sculpture. Um, are there any projects that you've seen that have A hundred percent. I think even, even something like NBA Top Shots is, is great. You know, um, it's, it's like, it's new and fresh. And, and I think it's, um, yeah, as I said, I've been, I've been reading so much, you know, Axie, um, you know, a lot of the stuff on wax as well. Um, I do try and keep track of everything. And uh, I, I think a lot of the companies are, are you know, in, still in the testing phase. It's, it's um, like, you it's know, you take a company fresh. like Tops that's got these amazing um, uh, IP in their uh, in their stable. They started with, tra with uh, Garbage Pail Kids, you know, which of course is like a, a you know, that, that was when I was a kid in the 80s that, that we used to trade garbage shell kids for real, you know. Um, so I think they're also testing the waters, waiting to see. So I'm sure within a very short time, we're going to start seeing football cards, uh, you know, football players. And, um, I think sports is going to be very big for NFTs. Um, it just makes a whole lot of sense. You know, you, you look back at the old uh, basketball, like Michael Jordan rookie cards and um, you know, and then and then also the the Pokemon and the Asian side of the market that also have these amazing collectibles from the past. Um, I think yeah, there's there's an incredible amount of potential. I think collectibles is is really something I've always thought is like designed for NFTs. Um, and then we're you know like for Enemy Metal, we're also looking to. Um, incorporate them into the, the whole economy so you know it's it starts with you know we, we've got a mining system so you know you'll be able to build mines and starports um, which are also nfts uh, the packs when you buy them are nfts um, ultimately we'll be collecting metals and those will be nfts and you use those to build the 3d starships and those are nfts and each of these stages you know if you want to just speculate you can just buy a pack and keep them for a few years and, and sell the pack. You know, every time somebody opens a pack, 
your pack becomes more rare, you know? So we just, uh, yeah, we're just trying to, we're trying to explore NFTs and, and see what, what can be done. And I really think there's, there's a lot of potential. And like I say, I'm pretty sure that there are even better ideas that will be coming out uh, in the months to come. And then Christina, how about you? Like, what's your mental checklist that you run through when you see a new NFT project? Um, do you look at utility as well um, as like a, a key point or what do you look for? Uh, I definitely agree with Jack on the point that innovation is something that is curious to see. And I think it's uh, each uh, unique project shows that the industry is uh, growing and it becomes uh, mature. So I think that's very important to see more and more interesting use cases being implemented. However, of course, uh, probably that's a professional. I really am excited when I see potential in terms of growth, scalability. And for me, it's very important when the project is being developed with the idea of um, real mainstream user experience, you know, so we all know how many projects do have a lot of challenges when it comes to user experience, starting with the um, complications that are obvious, like connecting the wallets or being limited to certain payment methods, uh, to more complicated things like uh, issues with the um, with not being able to support certain amounts of users in the same time and things like this. For me, when I see like negative examples, of course, it's a bit um, sad to see because uh, many projects have amazing ideas. Um, they want to show them to mass audience, but then uh, let's say the reality check shows that they were not ready to this massive audience, even if they managed to bring them. So I, I like the projects that do pursue this idea of mainstream and of very good user experience in the sense of that, I don't know, my grandma would be able to use it and understand what she's doing, like real e-commerce experience. And do you have any examples of projects that you think have been pretty successful on that front of having pretty good UX when it comes to uh, being an NFT project in crypto uh, that is more kind of uh, public facing or uh, mainstream facing? Um, you know, it's a good question because lots of projects uh, do perform certain things well and on some moments they might uh, show their rather weak sides. I think it's normal because each project is being developed constantly. We know that there is no such thing as finished product, basically. Um, so I think right now I'll be repeating after Jack because it's easier to remember brands when they were just named. Uh, I think NBA was a de definitely a huge step for the um, NFT as industry in the sense of that mainstream users, people who probably didn't know what NFTs are in uh, 2019, uh, were just able to step in and start collecting. Uh, I think it's very important that uh, this kind of use case was supported with the major brand, which is obviously NBA, so it was easier to make this transaction from normal person never heard, never touched the blockchain, to the person that is actually actively collecting and being involved in something crypto related. Uh, so I think this is interesting and good example in this particular sense that uh, they somehow changed the history of the industry. Uh, and I also agree with Jack that it's just the beginning. I think really great projects uh, just to come. Hopefully tomorrow we will <laughs> witness one of them launching. <laughs> Hey, Jack. Um, but yeah, jokes aside, I do think that uh, there is a lot of things to be developed and a lot of things to be improved in the industry before we can really reach a um, certain level of uh, usability. And yeah, I mean, good UX, utility, having like an innovative approach, something that hasn't been done before or different, they're definitely very important ingredients in the success of an NFT project. I think community is probably another key ingredient, um, but that's very tricky to kind of manage 
cultivate uh, and really express. But projects, at least these days, the NFT projects that have had the most success, like CryptoPunks or Board Ape Yacht Clubs, at least from the outside, seem to have very vibrant communities. I'm just curious how you two think about community as it relates to NFT projects and their success. Sure. Well, let me take this one. I think, you know what, Enemy Metal from the beginning has been a, a community project. Um, as, as I've said, I started developing the arcade game about three years ago, and uh, not many people have, have had the chance to test it, but I've made it a, a particular point that every single person that's tested and given me feedback, I've incorporated their ideas. So uh, each person, each tester, each player, they're the client, you know, and the client is always right. So if, if I can make it more fun, I'll, I'll do that. And so when we started our community, you know, we started with, uh, you know, just not, not very long ago, actually, about a month or six weeks ago. And, and we're now almost 2000 members in the community, um, you know, 3000 signups on the pre registrations on the website. So so things have exploded. And yeah, it is it's a we, we, we're taking great care to look after the community, but I think um, it is a lot of work. You know, there are some people that come in there asking the tough questions. Um, you know, it is, a, it is a constant thing that you have to be there to, um, to reassure people of, of what your plans are. You know, so I think, you know, putting, putting together a good plan is also something that's very important for these projects. Um, you know, like to give you an example there, we decided not to do a white paper. Uh, and instead, we have a battle plan, and it's you know it's visual. Uh, you can see how the system works, and I believe that a good system should be a simple system. Um, you know, if it's too complicated to explain, then you, you're not going to get through to people. And and I want people to share in the vision of what we're trying to accomplish with Enemy Metal. Um, you know, and, and I mean, there's there's something also that, that we're we're looking at. I mean, we, just to give you some examples of some things we, we're taking to the next level, we're building an AR app. So, you know, you'll be able to open your card packs using your phone. You know, the planets and the planes all fly out onto the screen. So, you know, that's something a bit fresh and new. Um, and then physical products. Um, so all our merchandise will have NFC, uh, near field communication chips, so that that will link into an NFT and, and make it an authentic, every hoodie you buy, every t-shirt cap uh, that are all authentic um, and authenticated on the blockchain. Um, so yeah, we, we're trying to, trying to just, and, and we have, uh, you know, we have our fingers in every area when there's a good idea, uh, Epix Industries and, uh, you know, Fred, our CEO is, is that kind of person. He just, uh, you know, if you ask him, should we do physical or AR, he says yes. And, and that's the way we approach it. We, we're just pushing the limits on at every angle of, of you know, what we can do with NFTs. And, and not just for enemy metal, for, uh, for the whole universe of Epix Industries, um, which will all be connected. You know, this is just the first launch for Epix, um, but the next one will be Mike Thompson's uh, Icons. In, and that'll probably be in, in about a month's time. So it's going to be rolling out very fast from here. Um, you know, we were very happy with the, with the performance we've had on Flow. Um, so, you know, but we've got a very experienced team. Uh, the technical guys have been working for more than three years on NFT technology. So, so yeah, we, we're confident in having a good launch and building, building something really amazing, you know? Totally. And then Christina, for you, um, again, like you, you were talking about the importance of UX for you with certain NFT projects that you get really excited about. Well, how do you think about community as, as a key kind of criteria or something that you're looking at for new projects before you start diving in or scooping up the, the different collectibles or NFTs there? Um, well, of course, community is important in the sense of that come on these are potential users those are collectors so users of any sort depending of what project is so to say that our community is uh, not important would be a huge uh, <laughs> mistake and it would also be not fair so as jack mentioned uh, i think for every 
project community is like vital in the sense that they a testing you hardly because uh, those tough questions are amazing you know because sometimes you just stop like get back for a second and think okay this this is a good, good question let me formulate it for myself and uh, make it digestible for people as well so in some sense it helps building the full picture that it's later stages easier to present and it can um, even affect uh, future stages of the project in a sense for example if community constantly asking about something and then you think well hey that's a good idea we might pick it up because uh, what is the community mostly those are people who are already very interested in what you're doing so you need to treat the ideas as uh, potentially good ones because you never know what they're going to convert into um, however i think that many projects um, run for the community before they actually deliver anything which might be a mistake because uh, you know for a young project having community that demands um, while they haven't even delivered i don't know mvp is a very challenging moment because you know the pressure is growing uh, community keeps demanding and growing already unhappy so i think this might be the challenge for young projects to you know first deliver at least something and then build community organically or in other ways. So yeah, short answer is community is uh, outstandingly important. Um, however, I think there's a lot of education from project side to deliver about um, what they're building, what are the stages, what is the roadmap. Otherwise, there might be misconceptions inside the community or wrong um, hopes and uh, expectations, which can be harmful for the project. So totally. I think both of you covered some really important ingredients uh, to help cultivate a successful community around an NFT project. Communication is supremely important, whether that, whether that takes the form of like a, a battle plan or a white paper or a roadmap, uh, that's a really important tool to have. And having a proper cadence of that communication. Um, it's not just that you put it out there in the ether once and kind of forget to talk to the community. It's this ongoing thing, but you need to find that natural rhythm. And finding ways, I think what you're saying too, like listening to the community, making the community members feel like they're able to collaborate. I feel like that's critically important. But with NFTs in particular and how they factor into the community, it's very interesting because people, especially the collector side, that purchase these NFTs that become part of the project, they almost develop this, this investor mindset, right? And in a sense, they're right, they do own a part of the project, but sometimes that expression of that ownership can take a very toxic turn. And I guess this is a question based on your previous experiences in the space or part of other projects, but Every project that has NFTs will encounter a toxic community member at some point. What are some tips or tricks that you've kind of noted along the way or directly experienced in order to deal with those more challenging members of the community around these NFT projects? Um, well, look, I think, you know, we, we try our best to be as patient as possible. Like we, we always assume that people are just looking for the information and almost always that is the correct assumption. You know, um, there, there have been many times where, where I'm physically exhausted from the, the questions that I'm getting and somebody's really like drilling me for, for detailed answers on, uh, you know, and we've, we've got a multi-phase plan, you know, leading up to the arcade game. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are asking details about the arcade game, which is, you know, sort of phase six of our, our plan. So uh, it's sometimes difficult to give exact details because I, I want to be truthful and I want to be accurate. And, you know, sometimes these things have to change according to, you know, what makes more sense throughout the other phases. So you, you've got to balance that. But, you know, Almost every single time I've just patiently answered question after question and to at the end of the guy will say, oh, thank you so much for taking the time to answer my question. And, and then it's all worthwhile. Um, you know, there are, of course, there, there are those special few that, that are there just to disrupt and cause chaos, you know, um, and, and for whatever reason, you know, like I think 
you know, we, we have a, a, an industrial uh, business, you know, we're legally compliant, registered in the United States. So that means a few things as far as our business goes, you know, um, as much as we would love to be open source and open source our software, and we may look at it in the future. For now, it makes more sense for us to be corporate and, um, uh, you know, and then build from what we have. Um, so, yeah, you know, you, you'll get a, a Bitcoin maximist or, or somebody who's who's like, no, they won't buy on anything unless it's Ethereum, um, you know, and these guys do come around and, you know, as I say, we, we answer patiently. But with our community, uh, you know, we decided to just, uh, we have one rule and that's that you respect one another. You always respect one another. So inevitably, you know, those guys, if they do cross the line, we... we get rid of them at the end of the day. I think it's like we give them the every opportunity to ask the questions. We answer them to the best of our abilities. But if it's if it's going nowhere and they actually become disrespectful, it's better to to remove the toxic elements. It, it's not it's not beneficial in any way. Like constructive criticism is awesome. We want constructive criticism. We want to be better. We, we want to build something better. You know, if if people are making good points, we, we stop and we think and we reevaluate and we try to include what they're trying to say. Um, but yeah, you know, toxic people have a different agenda. So I think you you've got to you've got to just be patient. You know, it's uh, it's it is a, a very tiring thing, and and sometimes they're they're in chains. You know, as soon as you've you've answered one guy's questions, the the next one will pop on and start uh, and continue where he left off. So uh, it doesn't get easier. Um, you know, but but we we're. We believe very much in what we're doing. And I think you could probably say that for any NFT project. We're, we're all in this genesis. We're all trying to build something incredible. And, and I have the hugest respect for every project in the space. And, and I wish all of us the success. I think we all succeed together. You know, it's um, every time there's a new project that's successful, that's good for everybody in the industry. And, and that's the kind of thing that we want to see, you know. So. And well, yeah, you made a lot of fantastic points there, but I definitely have to ask Christina, uh, have you had any experiences or observations of past projects of how they're able to kind of, um, yeah, deal with more challenging elements of the community or at least empower more positive elements that you think could be instructive for other folks looking at projects to participate in or if they're starting their own NFT project, things to be mindful of? Uh, first of all, I think it's fair to say that it's not just NFT communities that are being toxic time to time. I think anyone who has ever played video games and participated in communities uh, can say that there is a lot of toxic uh, people who will come just to fight. That's literally only purpose. Or come to troll or come because they don't like X, they love Z. And they will insist on this. So uh, arguments will, won't work. However, you might try. So I agree with Jack on that education is very important in the sense that educated community will protect itself in the sense that you might not even need your social media managers or moderators to step in because well-educated community that knows what project is about, that knows what's next, that knows what the team is doing, basically will answer questions for you. And they will do it passionately because they already here, they feel that it's their place, it's their space, and uh, they feel involved in the good way in the project. So for them to protect what they already believe in is also essential. So these people most likely will, in a very kind manner, or maybe not, <laughs> but definitely deliver a certain message to the people who ask, um, who ask the questions. And uh, no matter if they expect answer or not, but the answers will be there, not just from the founders or moderators or whoever, but from the community itself. So I think that's why education in the broad sense of uh, 
educating community might save a lot of time for moderators, social media managers, and so on. And again, I think it's like a firewall between the trolls and the community. And of course, there's a lot of things such as um, tribalism in industry, not only NFTs again, but it exists. Uh, however, again, I have to agree with Jack. I think many people, even when they come sometimes with the, like ironic comments, but generally if you explain something politely with the good arguments, uh, many people might convert their opinion or at least be more open to listen, digest, and maybe even get involved. Uh, I have a lot of these examples, especially earlier uh, when you know Ethereum was booming and basically there were almost no alternatives. And honestly, I know so many people who were converted in the sense to explore different blockchain, different solutions, just because you were talking to them, you were explaining why it is like this, why and what you're trying to do and what was already delivered. So it's, uh, let's say, toxicity always exists. You can find it on the streets easily when someone is in the bad mood. However, you need to treat it in a certain way. And again, important to make sure that you're transparent and people know what you're doing. So they won't question your actions. Very good. And yeah, the education of the community, I think that's such a supremely important point. And that low educated community, it really is beautiful to watch how like a new member comes in, has a question, and it's not the, the core team or the dev team or the social community managers that are coming in to answer questions or help the newcomer. It's the actual community itself. And that really is a special moment for the newcomer, for the community to watch and observe and to replicate and continue over time. And that helps generate extra value over and above the actual NFT project, whether it be a game, collectible, artist, all that good stuff, for sure. Um, but sort of related to that and still like staying on the profit side of things because NFTs and crypto, the money side is literally baked into everything. Um, and with certain older NFT projects uh, like CryptoPunks, I think is the best example, you see the potential for dramatic price appreciation over time. And it's almost like at this point, the, the price that a punk sells at has become that sort of metric for success, which is fun and exciting for the early members. But for people that are on the outside, I'm wondering if it could be a little bit off-putting or just a barrier that is insurmountable and like precludes people from joining. Um, so for, for new projects that are getting started that are incorporating NFTs, how do you balance that, the profit speculative side with the kind of inclusiveness? Is, are they mutually exclusive? Can you balance them forever? At a certain point, do you need to forget about it, inclusiveness and only double down on the actual existing participants? How are you thinking about that long-term, especially? Well, yeah, it is, you know, it is a big challenge. Um, you know, the people that, that are there early want to know why should I get involved early? So there has to be that reason and, and you have to give them a reason to say, hey, get on board now because this is the potential of, of what the growth is going to be. And then, as you say, to include people later, you you have to think cleverly. You know, you have to you have to make make some plans to you know. So what we've done is we've had uh, that the the drop rates are higher in our first drop. Um, you know, it's easier to get the rare cards, um, and then we'll we'll be removing some of the cards for the next edition, so that some of them are only available in our first packs. Um, you know, so that's an example of, of what we have to do there. But yeah, you, you, you do want to keep including people throughout the way. And it, it's not a simple process. Um, we, we've, we've had to really plan, as I say, like six full phases through to, to really get to something where it is cool. I mean, I think, you know, the goal for us is not, um, you know, and, and you'll see if you check our prices, we, we're not looking at making the big bucks from this. The, the goal here is to balance um, players being a part of the economy and, and benefiting from our success 
and with our development funding so that we can have ongoing development for not just the arcade game but other games because you know you, nfts are universal so once we've connected the nfts to the game engine we can make as many games as we want you know there's there's no limit to what can be done with them um but it is sort of the, the, the goal, I mean, in the case of Enemy Metal, the goal is to have a free to play arcade game. Um, and to build that, we're going we're gonna to have the miners and the colonizers. And these are the guys that, that are our early adopters are, you know, um, you know, they're, they're the early collectors that, that get involved from now, and they will have a chance to mine for the cards that the players will need to upgrade and build better starships in the, in the game. Um, but the, the whole idea, and, and we are very driven, uh, you know, we mentioned um, also that, you know, Pixios is one of Epic's industry's uh, products. Um, so we, we're very experienced with marketplaces. Um, and we really believe we've built a system where, uh, you know, over the, over the time when we get past our mining phase, that, that the players are the ones taking the majority of the profits. And we're just taking a small percentage, you know, of each transaction, but it's always player to player um, transfers and, and that that small percentage will become our development funding so that we can keep ongoing development because funding games is very difficult. You know, triple uh, A games it can very easily cost a hundred million dollars and more. Um, you know, so you, you've got to look at drastic measures like, you know, what World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy do where, they, where they're charging a monthly subscription. And that is exclusive for players. And we don't want to exclude players. You know, we want everybody to have a chance to have fun and enjoy it because, you know, we don't want 10,000 players. We want millions. And the only way to get millions of players is to make the game free. But development costs money. So... Building this balance, it, it's tricky and, and it's complicated, um, you know, but we, we believe that we've got, you know, some of the answers to this. We'll be figuring out a lot over, you know, at each phase. Like every time I think I've designed a simple system, I have a conversation with my CTO and he wants to take my head off. You know, it's, it's always more complicated than we think um, when it comes into practice. But... But, you know, one step at a time, we believe we can get there. And I think, uh, you know, once we built this back end, um, as I say, connecting the, the flow with Unity Engine and other engines, um, it'll be much more easy for, for developers in the future to, to start monetizing their games without having to worry about building all the monetization systems. So all of that back end should be built so that game developers can focus on making fun games you know because that that's why we get into this you know we don't we definitely not in it for the money you know you, you this is a passion project like you know you you become a game developer because you love video games and you want to you want to share something you know um you know in the case of enemy metal it's the it's my childhood you know i used to at the arcade games i used to play 1942 and raiden and these top-down shooters and and I, I love those games and, and there's nothing like that anymore. So we wanted to put a whole new spin on this, uh, you know, give it a different version. But, but I want to bring that fun that I had as a kid to kids today, you know. So, um, so I think that's the, yeah, that's the dream, you know, get that balance right between funding the development, making sure the players are benefiting from your success. I love that. Make it fun first, and then let these new tools help provide funding later on for you as a as a company, as a developing team, and then for the community as well. And for you, Christina, um, have, do you have any insights when it comes to balancing maybe the profit motivation of games with more like intrinsic motivators and game design and all that fun stuff? Absolutely. I mean. Uh, from my perspective, as Epic's building not only Enemy Metal, but other projects, I think this uh, balance is super important and it's also the key for user retention. What I mean here is that we obviously want for each collection to have not only people who want to make money or just grab uh, whatever because 
they have good mood <laughs> or they just got salary, but people who are passionate about this specific collection, because these are the people who will support projects, whatever the topic is or whatever the, whoever the artist is, or in case of game, obviously there's more game oriented people, because uh, these people will be the vessel for the project development in the sense that they will spread the word, they would support in all senses and so things like this. So uh, what I wanted to say is that in our case, what we do, because uh, right now we have pipeline of projects till the end of the year, um, mentions hip hop icons by Mike Thompson. Then we have Rakufi, which is a huge Mexican artist with the cyber mist. Um, what we are building, we are building the gamification system. So in that sense, um, if you like one collection more than other, but this collection went after you already invested or participated in the project, there will be ways to participate in what you like more in the sense that you won't feel bad about money you spent before on other projects. And I think this is crucial for the long term in the sense of that people will always come back. They will always know that they can find some new exciting things inside our ecosystem. And they will know that all the collections are connected with each other in the, as, as a whole picture. And I think this where this balance is being built uh, in the sense that, okay, it's not just about flipping NFTs, how in Ethereum we used to say, <laughs> but um, more about the long-term involvement into what uh, Epics in this case is building. Cool. And then I know we're running down on time. I had another question. It was more broad focused on some of the, the different blockchains out there, whether different blockchains present themselves as better alternatives for certain types of NFT projects. Um, but instead of diving into there, I want to make sure that I leave both of you ample time to kind of leave our, our viewers and listeners with the last message uh, about how you're thinking about a good, a good and great NFT project and what you're doing and what they can look for uh, in the future in terms of finding a new great NFT project. So to get started, I'll throw it back to you real quick, Christina, if you have any uh, last words or a message you want to leave the viewers with, please take it away. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we, it was very interesting to speak uh, with Jack and of course, thank you, Matthew, for having us. Uh, and having this conversation. Uh, yeah, I wanted to say that we're just in the beginning of a very interesting journey, both asset epics and NFT industry as such. And I think uh, those little things that are not little, such as stages of development, clear picture as a whole, will help other projects to thrive and to build more and more. So I really honestly wish this industry growth uh, even more than this year and uh, hope to see in a year uh, this as one of the really biggest industries in the world, crossing fingers, and it's really innovative. So I think it has the space to be very exciting. And of course, stay tuned for tomorrow. So I think Jack will definitely mention enemy metal, but yeah, less than 17 hours till our launch. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Um, it's it's great to chat and and you know I think just generally with blockchain people it's wonderful to just have a little brainstorm. You know I learn so much every time I talk to people and um, yeah you know what it's an incredible industry to be in. I'm very excited to be a part of it. Um, you know uh, I was interviewed by a YouTuber the other day who says he doesn't like to be called a YouTuber. He's a an internet historian an NFT historian. So, you know, and I think that's that's where we are. Like, this is the beginning of, of, of something really incredible. You know, we, we're going to see, I can't wait to see what we see next, you know, and and, and as as, we, as Christina says, I wish all the projects all the best. You know, we we are not like a one blockchain, you know, thing. We, we believe in that, that all of us succeed together, you know. Um, and yeah, you know, my last word has to be though, in uh, less than 18 hours, Enemy Metal will be doing our first drop. So please, uh, you know, join our Discord community, um, hop in and say hello. Um, and yeah, join the, join the fun. Definitely. And like you said, uh, we're just getting started here. I mean, the question of what makes a great NFT project, what is a great NFT project? It's so open-ended. 
right? We're just starting to track the ingredients of a great NFT project, whether that be an innovative kind of approach, utility, community, thinking of how to balance the profit motive with more like gamified aspects. We're just getting started and figuring out what does make a, a good NFT project. But I wanna thank you, Jack and Christina for joining me on this panel and providing great insights. Best of luck as well with the launch of Enemy Metal tomorrow. I think you can find it at enemymetal.com if I'm not mistaken. So definitely check that out. I have the countdown timer front and center on my computer. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Nifty Time, uh, pretty reachable there. But I want to thank both of you, Jack and Christina, and then First Mint Nation. I hope you enjoyed this, and please enjoy the rest of the sessions. Thank you. Thank you, guys.